everybody welcome back so this time around we are going to be taking the aws box that we worked on previously and got built and we're going to start adding uh, some quality of life improvements to that box so that we can start using it for all of the projects that we would like to use in the future. So that means we're going to change our shell. We're going to enhance some of the tools that we have. We're going to add Tmux and we're going to make some other assorted upgrades. So with that said, let's get started. All right, everybody, we are now logged into our system. We can type htop. And at that point, we can now see uh, that we have a single core and we have approximately one gigabyte of RAM and we have no swap. But this is an Ubuntu box and we should be fine. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and start installing some software. Sudo apt update. Sudo apt upgrade. Switch Y. I'm going to complete a full upgrade of this system. Okay, now we are going to reboot the box. And we are back in. So now that we are back into the machine, we can do sudo app install. And then we're going to add curl, git, elinks, and fish. Uh, you'll see that it's going to ask for a confirmation. And it has found everything that we have asked for. So we will choose yes. And this is just to get started for now. So now that that has been completed, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go to the Oh My Fish GitHub, and you will find they have an installer right here. We will copy that. We can potentially take a look at this code base if we wanted to. Uh, I have had no problems with what they provide, so I am going to curl install. You'll see it will do a configuration and then it switches this to fish. We're going to do OMF install scorp fish. That's going to change how our system looks. Go dollars shell. Uh, you'll see bin bash. So we're going to sudo change shell switch s. Uh, we can do which fish sudo change shell switch s user bin fish and then our user will be Ubuntu. We're going to exit, exit again, clear, log back into the system. You'll see we're now running fish. I can echo dollar shell. We will see user bin fish is now the official shell. So we have added a shell that will give us completion. Uh, it will also give us uh, some special colors. Uh, and using Scorefish now, if you go into a Git repository it will actually show you uh, a little bit of information about that git repository again it's just quality of life makes things easier on you and of course if we want to run any kind of bash script or anything like that we can still do that and you can also always type the word bash to hit bash and then exit to come back but if we type in tmux and hit enter you'll see that tmux does not look very good so i have a tmux so if we do scp-i downloads AWS training, uh, we can then send .tmux.conf to Ubuntu at 35.175.188. Should have been a 108. There we go. And if we vim .tmux.conf, you will see uh, I have some terminal overrides already set. Uh, you'll see that we're setting to screen 256 color, uh, mouse is turned on, and then we have a user share power line bindings for power line. So we're going to want to add power lines. Install and power line. Tmux. And we have power line. So after a few seconds of fiddling with that, we have the ability to run power line. Power line's really neat. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this. We can do something like control Bravo and then uh, cut the screen in half. Uh, we can do control B, control Quebec, and we can switch between the two. 
uh, very quickly. So I can type ls there, or I can do something like htop here. And then uh, here I could do something like regular top, uh, just to show you the difference between the two commands. And so now you have access to both of those if you were using dmux. So I will exit out of that here. And then you'll see we're at zero. I can also create tabs. So I can create e-links here, uh, go to google.com if I wanted to, and then immediately switch back uh, and forth between the two. So obviously this kind of quality of life improvement is incredibly important uh, if you want to be effective with your terminal. It's just one more way to make you faster. Now that we have Tmux working and we have eLinks configured uh, and curl and Git and several other tools that are all available to us here. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to do a search for Python 3 and we want to install Python 3 but one of the things that I want to do is just take a look using our search to see if there's anything in here that we have to take a look at first. And I don't think there is. But again, the whole purpose here is use the tools that are available to you, right? Uh, so if we actually do this, Python 3, we'll see Python 3 is already installed. So we can exit out of that. But do we have pip? No. Do we have pip 3? We don't, but it warns us and it says, hey, sudo apt install python3 pip. So sudo, pap, sudo apt install python3 dash pip. Hit enter. Uh, we will choose yes because we want to install pip. And then this will complete very quickly. And now the next thing that we will do is pip3 install shodan dash dash user. And we will see that Shodan is not on our path. And since we're using fish, if we echo dollars path, you'll see that our path is here. So we're going to use a command called fish add path and need to do anything else other than just do a dash a for append enter exit reconnect echo dollars path and we will see it is there so now shodan exists so if we hit the button it's going to tell us that we need to initiate shodan but within just a few moments we now have the ability to interact with shodan directly from the system uh, thanks to fish add path so at this point we have added shodan we've added uh, fish we have added curl git and elinks uh, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add neovim and we can do sudo apt install neovim we're going to choose yes uh, on here and we're going to use this to set up NeoVim here in just a little bit uh, by adding things like our configurations. And we're going to uh, be able to add a whole bunch of really cool tools to NeoVim to, again, make text editing and keeping information and things like that a lot easier. So we can type in NVim and it will start and you can see NVim opens. But... If we hit Vim, it opened regular Vim. So one of the things that I like to do is I will go to configure and then fish, and then we can go to functions. And uh, I will actually show you on my local machine, dot config forward slash fish functions. And you can see I have one called Vim.fish. And so I will touch Vim.fish. I will edit vim.fish and then we're going to add a function vim in vim dollars argv and then end and one two we'll do something like one two three four 
just for the sake of cleanness. And now every time we hit Vim, it will automatically open in Vim for us. So that solves the issue of worrying about whether or not I'm going to constantly and continuously end up opening uh, regular Vim instead of in Vim, because in my mind, I am incredibly used to just hitting Vim. I just want to hit Vim, just type the word Vim out, and then I know that I am in Vim, but I want to use NeoVim, so we just create a function to overwrite that. During our next video, what we will do is we will configure Vim, and in the meantime, this gets you set up, and if you have ever used uh, Vim before, then great, you can start configuring that the way that you want, but if you haven't, then we're going to go ahead and set up sort of a quote-unquote hacker's Vim so that we have all of the tools that we need to be able to work on just about anything that we want to work on directly through the terminal. The, the whole point here is for you to have a system that you can use and work in at all times without having to worry about whether or not uh, you're going to be able to accomplish something without having to switch out to another machine. We want to offset that workload so that we're always using an incredibly fast internet. We want that data center level internet. We want a data center level system. We want to be able to take snapshots. We want to be able to work on that box. We want it external to our internal network. We don't want this thing local to us and we don't want to have anything set up that we have to worry about using local tools to be able to work. We want to have a fully functional workflow that is 100% remote so we keep everything away from our current box. So with that said, we have a pretty cool system now. We've got lots more stuff to do and a lot more things to set up. But in the meantime, uh, we have installed several applications and set our system up and we're still using 0% CPU and about 196 megs of RAM, which isn't much different than what we were using uh, when the box first turned on. So even with an alternative operating system, I can close this. I can hit something like Tmux, hit HTOP. And so in Tmux, we're using maybe an additional 10 to 15 megs of RAM. Uh, and then our CPU usage has gone up just slightly, uh, occasionally hitting that 13-14%, uh, but still well worth the performance benefits that we're going to gain from our workflow being faster by having access to tools like Tmux and having access to uh, InVim and all of the other stuff that we'll have access to. So with that said, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to continuing this project and showing you all kinds of cool things that you can do thanks to companies like AWS and other companies that are running the cloud. So if they're going to put those computers out there, we might as well take advantage of them. Thank you, everybody. Please don't forget to add some comments, uh, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. It helps. I would appreciate it tremendously. I'd like to get more engagement. And the only way that I can get these videos out to people is if people are actually watching them. So if you made it all the way to the end, I want to say thank you very much for being here when I'm just getting started and obviously still learning how to do some of this video editing. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. And I hope that these tutorials and messages help you all. And obviously, if you all have any questions, there's something I figure I can do for you. Or if you all need anything cybersecurity wise, um, you know, if you're looking for a career or trying to find a job or something like that, feel free to reach out. I have a LinkedIn. You can probably look me up pretty easily. Uh, I will happily try to help anybody go out and get prepared, get your certifications, find a school, whatever it is that you want to do. Just let me know. That's what I'm here for. I want to help people. So uh, the best way that you can help me is just interact and let me know what I can do and whatever I can do for you all, I'll do it. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it and good luck everybody. I hope these videos help you.